I'm a digital artist and indie game designer, and I have to make an idle game in one week. Why? Because I'm trying to improve my skills by rapidly going through the process of game prototyping to learn as much as I can. But to give myself as many advantages as possible, I'll be using AI to assist me along the way. And if I can't do it, I'll have to eat a big mushroom live for all of my subscribers. So subscribe if you want that. Living people eat dead mushrooms. Living mushrooms eat dead people. It all starts with one idea, secret hive mind. A user in my Discord generated a random name, and an AI generated some images of mushrooms for their profile photo with that new name. This landed in my mind and grew, much like a spore from a mushroom that lands in a pile of dirt, rich in Factorio, Unity projects, and YouTube videos. It leached into my brain, bubbling and frothing into something unknown. Time was ticking. I opened a new chat GPT instance and asked, Can you help me come up with a themed incremental game? Sure. Here are a few steps that you can follow to come up with a themed incremental game. Choose a theme. The theme of your game will dictate the overall setting and atmosphere of the game. Consider themes that you are interested in or that you think would be fun to explore in a game. Alright, well, I've already got a theme. Mushrooms, hive mind. Let's expand on that for a bit. I'm exploring the theme of mushrooms as it relates to video games. Now, I'm not going to read all these out to you because they seemed really obsessed with Mario, but eventually I said, Please continue, but stop talking about Mario. Certainly. Here are a few more words and phrases that might be associated with mushrooms in the context of video games, but that are not specifically related to the Super Mario series. Eventually, after a lot of talking with something that doesn't even have living tissue, I got this. Mushroom Farming Simulator. This could refer to a type of video game in which the player manages a mushroom farm, with gameplay focused on activities like planting, harvesting, and selling mushrooms. I like where this is going. Mushroom farming. Determine the core gameplay mechanics. Incremental games typically involve the player performing a simple action to earn points, which can be used to unlock upgrades for new abilities. Decide how the player will earn points in your game and what they can do with those points. Alright, new chat, new question. Please list as many incremental and idle game mechanics as you can. Sure. Here are some common mechanics used in incremental and idle games. Clicking or tapping to generate resources, upgrading structures or units to increase resource generation, unlocking new structures or units by reaching certain milestones or spending resources, prestige or resetting progress to gain permanent bonuses. Yeah, that sounds about right. Multiplayer though, hmm, well, maybe one day. Mushrooms grow over time and need to be harvested before they're planted again. Full-grown mushrooms can be used to expand your farm and buy various things that increase production, like auto-harvesting and faster growth. Add depth and complexity. While incremental games are known for their simple gameplay, you can add depth and complexity by including additional mechanics or systems. For example, you could add resource management, base building, or character progression. Hmm, this seems like section two, but more. Okay, so mushrooms need to be harvested. Harvesting enough of them allows you to buy an upgrade that harvests them automatically. Enough mushrooms and you can purchase golden spores that gives a chance to grow golden mushrooms that give a bonus to production. We need to introduce hive mind aspects into this game, so let's make the prestige mechanic starting a new farm and converging with the hive mind. After the old farm is folded into the hive mind, you're awarded spores based on the current amount of mushrooms you have. More mushrooms equals more spores equals more farm, which means more mushrooms. Each farm will convert into a hive mind point that you can then use to specialize your hive mind by allocating these points into skills. To start, you only have access to brown mushrooms. And this entire mechanic only unlocks once you've reached a certain level of progression. Integrate the theme. Once you have the core gameplay mechanics in place, consider how you can integrate the theme of your game into the gameplay and overall design. This could include using artwork and sound effects that fit the theme, as well as incorporating theme-specific elements into the gameplay itself. Huh, it seems like I actually kind of did number four at the same time. Playtest and iterate. As with any game, it's important to playtest your incremental game to see how it plays and to identify areas for improvement. Use the feedback you receive to iterate on the design and make any necessary changes. And that step is way too far ahead to be actionable now. These steps seem more like a list of things to keep in mind as you're working, not really sure how useful the AI actually was here. Regardless, we now have a very basic gameplay idea for our very basic idle game. The next day I was pondering the mechanics of this game concept while in the bathroom, 
and it needs something more active for the player to do instead of just waiting for mushrooms to grow. How could the hive mind aspect of this game provide game mechanics? I guess I'll need to keep thinking about that. You know, a good way to mull something over is to play flash games, small scale indie projects that explore an idea or are otherwise artistically exploratory. Off to new grounds. <gasps> I played this game called Damage Per Second. It's a very simple game with only three upgrade buttons, but I still had a really good time. You click the party member on the right to attack the guy on the left. I like that each class has its own color. The animations are enjoyable and they even made the weapons light up when they crit. It reminded me that you don't need to have something for the player to actually be doing for it to be a good idle game. In fact, most idle games don't have something for you to do at all, so you can do something else while it runs. Like how I'm playing this game right now as I write the script. Next I looked at, uh, huh. Idle Necromancer. Seems familiar. This game's pretty flashy and it has a good mix of puzzle and idle game mechanics. Very nicely executed. Math is always fun, but it did leave me with a feeling that I wasn't playing optimally. Games like this can be mathematically solved pretty easily and that always takes the fun away. <sighs> Alright, let's get started making the game. Start a new project using the 2D URP template, import do tween as always, import some resources that I bought and or found over the years, and for this entire project, I'll be using GitHub Copilot, which I've been using for over a year now. First, we're gonna build an art concept to serve as the reference point for the actual game. Add a few isometric cubes, move them around to look visually pleasing, change their color to give the illusion of depth, and add a mushroom. Add a coin, put a mushroom over it, now you have mushroom coins. Shrink that down, move it to the corner, add a text mesh pro component, change the font, set some placeholder text, drop the coin, make it one big mushroom, add a banner and make it look really bad by stretching it, and there you go, a simple concept art piece using actual assets to help steer the core code. Next, we're gonna create a block. We already have the graphics for the block from one of the many, many packs I own. I wish I knew what pack it was, but the folder's just labeled 7000. Code time. Load up your IDE. Make a script and name it anything you want. I'm going with world block. Attach this to the game object. While we're at it, rename the block to something better. In our script, add a vector 3. This vector 3 is going to store our coordinates. Add an enum and label it something intuitive like biome. We'll be using this to determine the sprite type of the block and any potential properties that it has. I'm adding rock, grass, and dirt just to have some settings. For now, we'll be doing this in the update or fixed update method, but I'm making a note here to add a check in the future so we don't do the calculations every frame, when we're going to have a lot of blocks that could get really laggy. To start, we'll calculate the game object's position based on the block pause of the block. I'm establishing the XYZ as such. Next, do a bunch of math and figure out how far apart the block should be, and the ratio between the world space and the block space. In the process, you'll add more parameters to the script, like offsets. For this project, the spacing looks like this. Now we need to make the biome handle the texture. For this we're going to use the enum plus the absolute remainder of the sum of the block pause divided by 3 to get a texture from a resource folder. Simple. Next we're going to lower the brightness of the sprite based on how far away from the center of the world space it is. The farther away, the darker it gets. And just like that, we have a little block that's aligned to a grid and has configurable properties based on the location in world space. Okay, well, it's a bit rough but spend some time smoothing out the code and it'll look a lot better. Approximately 10 hours later. I'm not gonna say everything I did here, but I added that check I mentioned earlier and overall just polished everything up. Now abstract this block a bit to make it more flexible. We're gonna need multiple types of blocks and using an enum for all of them isn't gonna be very nice in the future. Take the world block, make it the child of a new script called block and move all of the block pause related things into that class. Be sure to change your privates to protect it and virtualize your Unity methods so you can override them in the child classes. Oh, and don't forget to call the base, unless you don't want that. Now we can make several types of blocks that all function the same, but have different properties or features. It's not much, and it may seem like I'm working on things that are completely unrelated, but trust the process here. And now comes the part of the video where I sprinkle magic over the whole screen and wipe to a much more completed project. And you may be wondering, what? But you just cut ahead, and the entire project's completely different now. Yep, that's the iterative process at work, and if I wrote down every step I did, this video would be 45 minutes long. Sorry to everyone who wanted a tutorial, but I'm really trying to inspire you to go off on your own coding adventures instead of copying mine. Enough wasting time. We need to get some game mechanics done. Before we can get to actual gameplay though, some more groundwork has to be laid. All these blocks are great, but I need a block manager that can move the blocks, change their state, and generally handle all the level data. Three days later. Whew. Okay, that's done and it only took... Three days? This video's due tomorrow. Oh my god, I'm gonna have to eat an enormous mushroom if I don't get this video out in time. You remember that from the intro? 
Before the last transition, it was only day two. Where did the week go? All right, here we are at the end of the week. I iterated over this design so many times. I deviated a bit from the original design doc, but that's part of the process too. Let's go over a design doc and see what we improved on and what we missed. Clicking or tapping to generate resources, check. Upgrading structures or units, check. Unlocking new structures or units, uh, I missed that one, but it is planned for the future if this does well. Prestige or resetting progress to gain permanent bonuses, check. Hiring managers or assistants to automate resource generation, uh, kind of check, but it's just a regular upgrade. Gambling or chance-based minigames, mm, didn't do that one, but I want to. Idle bonuses or resource generation that increase while the player is away. Uh, that would be nice, but the game is too short for that right now. Allowing players to complete challenges or achieve milestones to unlock new content. Uh, that kind of exists. You have to unlock things. Implementing a skill tree that allows players to customize their playstyle. That was planned and it didn't make it in. I had to cut it for time. Adding a multiplayer component like a leaderboard or competitions. Okay, so I'm scared of multiplayer, but maybe one day. Well, I'm pretty satisfied with what I accomplished this week. I found myself actually playing the game instead of working on it more than once. The entire hive mind aspect didn't make it into the game, but overall I'm really happy with it, and I think some more work and balance could be done, and it would be very, very enjoyable. There wasn't a save system at the time of writing this script, but since then I've actually updated the game, so uh, go check it out. There's a link down below in the description and in the pinned comment. Some of the things I want to add are more mushrooms that grow differently and have different upgrade paths. Maybe uh, that hive mind skill point tree would be nice. I do want to talk about what just happened. I saw someone else use a robot to generate a new identity for themselves, and then that identity filtered through my head into a rough idea, which I then fed into an AI, and then had a back and forth with that AI until I was able to cement enough groundwork to springboard my own thoughts into something that I then used another AI to assist me in making. The future is nuts, dude. I can only do this because of all the generous donations from my patrons and the channel members. On screen now. And I'll see you in the next video. And thank you for watching. One week later. All right, here we are over a week after I finished editing the video and I kept working on it in my free time just because I, I really actually like this project a lot and I wanted to see it finished. So we have a whole lot of new things here. We have a mushroom per second. We have tool tips that now tell you information about various aspects of the game and what upgrades do. There's now three different mushroom farms you can unlock. I disclose the equations that I'm using to calculate the spores. I'm not going to talk too long about this, but uh, if there's interest in this game, I would love to keep continuing development. So uh, be sure to check out the Itch.io page and, you know, like, share, subscribe, all that crap.